If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com And welcome everybody to the Dan Bedani Show right here at TruthRadioShow.com. So if you're not subscribed, guys, go to my uh, channel, TruthRadioShow.com, my website, and has all my channels that you can subscribe to. So uh, we're working on Matthew chapter 23 today. So it's a comprehensive study. So if you're looking just for somebody to read the Bible straight through, we don't do that. We actually take our time the way it's supposed to be read. You know, just read through it. You got to take your time, understand what words mean if you don't understand them. Uh, read the description in this context. So we're on to Matthew ch chapter 23. So uh, what we do here, guys, before we begin, we do a Bible study approach this way. First, we pray for wisdom and understanding. So what we do is we get in prayer to Yeshua Messiah, Jesus, please forgive us for our sins and our trespasses and our transgressions. And Lord, make us pure before the Father. And Father, we come to you, ask you in your mighty name to help us understand your word we're about to learn today and help us disseminate it with your divine teacher, the Holy Spirit, that I, we ask to come upon us to teach us your word, the way it's supposed to be taught. In your precious name, amen. And so we got the prayer there, and also what we do, guys, is we read the scripture in context, because context is key, plain and simple. And uh, let the scripture interpret scripture. That's how we do things. Yeah, We don't uh, take the understanding. I don't lean on my understanding. I don't lean on any man's understanding. I lean on the understanding within the context of Scripture, which is the Scripture interprets itself through the Holy Spirit, plain and simple. So if that makes sense to you guys, and I encourage you guys to open up your own Bible, and this is the only plan you should be trusting. You know what I mean? Nobody else's plan, but the only plan that's 110%, and that's the Holy Bible. So if you've got a Bible, guys, even though we're going to show it on screen and in some of uh, the broadcasts that share our broadcast here, they have an audio version, so please open your Bibles. Regardless, if you want to open your Bible, go for it. So what we do is we're going to start off with Matthew chapter 23. And uh, so if you miss Matthew chapters 20, 1 through 22... Uh, we got right here on our video series, so uh, check it out on our channel. So anyway, so we left off at chapter 22. Once again, the Pharisees and scribes and the high priests would heavily try to goad Jesus into saying something wrong. So they could use it against him to condemn him. So, and Jesus all the time just hammers these people right back, you know, uh, asks a question with the, you know, for the answer. He gives them the answer by asking the question to them, you know what I mean? And just like nails these people. It's amazing, you know what I mean? And so um, now, chapter 23, now Jesus is just fed up. He is just fed up with these so-called religious leaders, which is the high Nazi of Israel there, all the, um, the priests and the Pharisees and scribes. So, uh, here we are, and again, chapter 22 is like, yeah, they kept challenging Jesus. You know what I mean? Because they're, they're trying to, every which way to condemn him. And Jesus already told his disciples, yeah, they're, they're going to execute me. They're going to crucify me. They're going to kill me. You know what I mean? So he seen this coming. He knew this was coming. It's part of the plan. You know what I mean? It's sad, but it's part of the plan. And that's the reason why Jesus is here for it, to die for our sins. We always got to remember that. He is the final land sacrifice. So anyway, uh, chapter 23 here. And uh, then they spake, I'm sorry, Jesus spoke unto the multitudes and his disciples. So after all that stuff going on, right, Jesus turned to the disciples and the multitude of people. That's all the people just gathered and was listening to Jesus. And um, Jesus helped all these people too. You know? So we're looking at thousands of people. Jesus turned and spoke to them. And he said to this then, right? Now this is awesome. He literally puts the Pharisees and the scribes in their place. He calls them right out for what they actually are. This is just amazing, right? So the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. In other words, they are the authority of Israel. That's what he's saying. The scribes and Pharisees, and high priests and all that, they are the authority of Israel, all right? And they sit in Moses' seat. You know, in other words, like not being the king of Israel, but being the authority of Israel. That's what it is, right? So anyway, and he says, also, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not do after their works, for they say and not do. So they walk the walk, but they don't, I'm sorry, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. That's what he's saying, you know what I mean? They, they, it's like, do as I say, not as I do. 
know what I mean? So they don't do nothing. You know what I mean? So that's what he's saying. You know, he's calling for out for what, what they actually are. And today's world, it's probably going to be, you know, people say, well, this is anti-Semitism. You know what I mean? And speaking this in the end times, too, you, you got to be called anti-Semitic, too. Uh, and there's a lot of that stuff going on right now in 2022 here. It's November 2022. A lot of that stuff going on right now and people speaking the truth about uh, the leaders of Israel today. The same thing. You know what I mean? So, and it's not when nobody's anti-Semitic. You know, nobody's anti-Jew. These are fake Jews and all that, you know, in today's world. Um, you know, the leaders of Israel, not all the Jews, I'm just saying that. But anyway, don't mean to veer off, but in the, again, Jesus in verse 3 says, Therefore, whatever ye they bid you observe, and observe and do, but ye not after ye their works, for they say and did not do not. You know, plain and simple. For they bind a heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on the men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So they put all these burdens on the people. That's what he's saying. The, the Gentiles and um, the Pharisees, they put all these burdens and grievous things on the people. But they themselves will not even move a finger while you put the stuff on your shoulders. You know what I mean? But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their practicalities and enlarge borders of their garments. So he's saying all the works they do, you know, it, would it, would it, the small work that they do do, they do it all in front of men, so it's seen by men. And they border their garments, and they love the uppermost rooms of the feast. So when they're at feast, they love being at the, the VIP section, so to speak. And the chief seats in the synagogues. So everywhere they go, they get high class, like first class everything, you know what I mean? They go into a feast, they get the, um, the VIP room, if you want to put it that way. That's why Jesus talked to uh, Layman's terms, parables, you know, so you can understand what he's saying. So this is what it's saying. <laughs> Everywhere they go, right, they are glorified. They get the top seats, they got the best service, everything else is what he's saying, right? And the chief seats in the synagogue. So while you're sitting on that little hard bench, they're sitting on leather couches or something, you know? So, and, um, and greening in the markets... So this was Jesus saying, and they loved it, you know, they loved this, you know, the Pharisees and scribes and all that. They love being in the uppermost rooms of the feast, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and, they, and greeting the markets, people greeting them, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. So they love walking around, and people say, oh, Rabbi, how you doing, sir? You know, but be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, because Rabbi means master, means teacher, right? Even Christ, and ye that are brethren. And call no man, this is like, what I mentioned uh, when I first started this book, guys, uh, Book of Matthew, I mentioned that, and I'm going to stand by it, the Book of Matthew, all right, and if you haven't seen it already, and you see it some more, the Book of Matthew is the nuclear bomb against every, in all religions, every one of them, even the 40,000 different versions of Christianity. Because we don't follow religion, guys. We don't follow these um, these churches. We follow the church of Jesus. And that's me, you, everybody here. The remnant of the church. We're not led by no Pope, no Pat Robinson, Billy Graham, anything like that. We are led by Jesus himself. Plain and simple. And the Holy Spirit. We don't need no middleman. Plain and simple. And if that makes sense to you, then you, we're on the right page here. You know what I mean? And we're on the same page as to say. So, and again, this is, this is amazing because just destroys all these religions. You know what I mean? The, the Catholic Church, all these fake Christianity groups, is uh, Judaism, all that stuff. You know, it's amazing. So, and it says, call no man upon the earth father, for your father is what? In heaven, which is in heaven, right? So notice how um, uh, Catholic brothers and sisters, they call priests fathers, and they blasphemy call the Pope Holy Father? Yeah. When Jesus himself says, don't do that. Your father is in heaven. And you know he's not talking about birth father. Right? You know what I mean? When you have a child and stuff like that, you're a dad or a father, whatever, that's one thing. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about in the spiritual sense. Don't call them your father, because our father, we only have one father spiritually. And that's our heavenly father. Yahweh, God, and the creator. Plain and simple. So, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. So, don't be called master or don't call anybody else master. 
And I was in martial arts, guys. I, I'm a black belt, Shotokan and um, Kempo. And I stopped calling because um, my sensei considers himself a master. Well, that's, they, they, that's a title in the Shotokan, in the Japanese Shotokan. When somebody is like above, I think, a third degree black belt, they become what they call a master, right? I, I don't call him master no, no more. I can't do that. You know what I mean? Because this is what the Bible says. I can't, you know, go against my master was Jesus Christ. The only master I have is Jesus Christ, plain and simple. It's not out of disrespect, but, you know, in whatever, you have to be firm in your faith, guys. So, and people say, well, well I call uh, the priest father, or when I see a rabbi, I call him rabbi, right? Just out of respect. What do you mean out of respect? You're not respecting. Who are you respecting? And I want to call people on that right now, too, because I don't know how many people I said this, right? I talk to people. It's like, well, you know, I just called that, that priest father because out of respect. Or I just called that uh, Jewish leader rabbi out of respect. Or I just called that sensei master out of respect, right? Out of respect for you. you first of all, let me ask you something, right? You're doing this out of respect for them, these people, right? Humans, right? But at the same time, you are disrespecting Jesus. You're disrespecting God. So who are you afraid to disrespect? Are you afraid to disrespect that so-called rabbi or father or, you know, this priest, whatever, or uh, this uh, karate master? No, I, I, I could care less. You know what I mean? I, I'd rather disrespect them than our Heavenly Father and Jesus, plain and simple. So this is where you got to draw the line. Oh, I'm just going to do it out of respect. No, you're not going to do it out of respect. If you do it out of respect for Jesus, you're not going to call a Jewish leader rabbi. You're not going to call a priest or a pope father. You're not going to call some kind of a yogi, whatever, master, right? So I'm going to, this is Christians that do this all the time, though. Christians, everybody does this stuff. Oh, out of respect. No, out of respect, you don't call them that. Even if they get offended, so what? What do you do? I'd rather offend and get somebody ticked off at me or whatever the case uh, a regular person and do this to Jesus. Imagine how you stand before the Father on Judgment Day. You know what I mean? Or, uh, you know, you stand before the Father. Either way, you know, if you're saved, you, you don't go to Judgment Day, whatever, but you stand before the Father and meet him. It's like, oh, oh. he's going to ask him, why'd you call him Master or Rabbi or Father? And you go, oh, I just did it for respect. Imagine telling the Father that to his face. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like disrespecting your father, right? Your earthly father, right? Imagine you're calling um, you know, you know, this guy on the street or whatever, your new mom's, uh, I mean, your mom's uh, new boyfriend or something like that, call him father, and it assaults the real real father, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I can use many examples. I'm just trying to get to the point here. You know what I mean? Imagine calling somebody else your dad when your dad's working hard for you, you know what I mean? When your dad's doing everything for you and you call somebody else dad but not him. Or you call him dad and uh, it's going to insult him. It's going to, uh, you know, offend him. That's disrespect to your earthly father, right? You don't want to do that. So why would in the world would you just try to disrespect our heavenly father? So next time you see a priest or a Jewish leader or some one of these uh, experts, whatever, you don't call them master, rabbi, or father. Plain and simple. Bottom line. And I'm just telling you how it is. Plain and simple. You know, you don't like it, deal with God. You know what I mean? I'm not politically correct, and I'm not going to be. You know what I mean? And I'm going to call you a generational rape. I'm going to you know, point you right out if I have to. You know what I mean? That's how I am. I don't hold nothing back, you know? And Jesus cert most certainly didn't either. So if you think me being, oh, Dan's not being politically correct, or he's not being Christian because of the way he talks, you know, you might as well go to another, um, some other uh, ministry or something because you're not going to get that here. We don't sugarcoat things. We don't blow smoke up people's rear ends. We tell you exactly how it is. You don't like it? Tough. Plain and simple. I could care less. You know what I mean? I'm just reading the word and I'm doing exactly what Paul did, Peter did, and Jesus. They'll tell you to your face, okay? You're a hypocrite or something like that. You know what I mean? They're not going to hold back. Because when I do that in real life, they, I call these uh, leaders out, and you people, you know, the people out there, oh, Dan, you, that's not Christian you. You shouldn't be talking like that. Oh, what do you think Jesus would say to him? What do you think Paul or Peter would say to him? Oh, we got to talk to them like kind and pleasant. Oh, uh, people who mislead people? No, we're going to call them generation of vipers, false prophets to the face. You got to be bold, okay, to be a follower of Jesus Christ, okay? That's why I'm not a Christian per se. You know, these so-called religions out there. 
I don't follow any of them. I follow Jesus directly. The only person I have to, the only one I have to worry about impressing, okay, impressing at the end of the day is I have only father. Is that I could care less what people think of me, nor do I care less what these religious people think. You know what I mean? Could care less. I answer to the father only, plain and simple. And that's the attitude all of us need to have. So, uh, verse 12 here, and sorry for the rant, guys. And whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So now he, you know, here we go. He's just ripping into the priests, ripping into the scribes, the Pharisees, and all this stuff, right? Telling um, the, you know, the, the his followers, you know, the multitudes and the disciples, us, right? He's going into a rant. So just the rant that I just went into, that was Jesus up, uh, you know, talking to these people. Really ticked off. Because remember in chapter 22, right before this, he had this, once again, the scribes and Pharisees, once again trying to goad him, asking him questions to try to get him, certain questions to try to get him to answer wrong so they have something to accuse him by, to, you know, to kill him. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. So now Jesus is utterly fed up and he is ranting away like crazy, like, like we just did, yeah. And he says, whoever shall exalt himself will be a base and he that humbles himself will be exalted. Because these religious leaders, are, you know, these ra rabbis, what, I'm not going to call them rabbis, are, um, these scribes and Pharisees and whatnot, these priests, they walked around and feel exalted. And people exalted them. But the ones who are based will be exalted, the humble. And he goes, but woe. And any time you hear woe, okay, from the Father or Jesus, yeah, it's something you want to shut, shut up, drop what you're doing, and pay attention. <laughs> because when they say woe, it's like you, yeah, it's probably one of the most stern warnings you could ever hear. All right, plain and simple. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Does that sound politically correct to you? No, because Jesus was not politically correct. So if any of you, uh, those blokes in the churches you go to, that say, oh, you know, Dan talks like the, you know, the, the unpolitically correct. We're not supposed to talk like that. Bull. Jesus did, Paul did, and uh, Peter did. He called these people out for what they are to their faces. And he says, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For ye shut up in the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in it. So he's telling them, it's like, you think you're going into the kingdom of heaven, nobody else is. But you know what? You're not going there. The people who you're condemning and looking down upon, they're the ones who are going to go into it. Not you. And woe unto you, again, woe. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you devour widows' houses, and for pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Now, there's just, you know, I'm going to use this language plain and simple. Jesus is utterly pissed off, okay? And I can't <laughs> uh, use a better word to describe that. He is really ticked, all right? Plain and simple. And woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you compass the sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye uh, make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. So what that sounds like to me here, first of all, when you devour the hip uh, devour widows' houses for the pretense of a long prayer, so you take the you know the houses of the widows and all that, you take the possessions, I believe this is the saying, therefore you shall receive the greater damnation, because you're basically you're stealing, that's what you're doing. So, and woe to the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, you compass the sea and land to make one parcelate. And me, uh, and I forgot, I don't know what the meaning of the parcelate is, guys, so let's look that up. And like I said, I, we have prior things here. I, um, myself, okay, learn as I go along, you know what I mean? So I do pre-read these chapters and all that, so... Um, so I have, you know, somewhat of a clue what I'm reading here. So uh, what I do is, you know, when you look at uh, meanings of words here. So uh, it's a proselyte, a person who has converted from one opinion religion to a party to another. 
All right, so a proselyte is a person that's converted. So yeah, now we understand what the word means. Now, if you didn't understand what that meant, and it's like, what is he really talking about, right? Now, when you like I said, we need to study each word. If you don't know what it means, we need to look it up, right? Uh, we need to read this stuff in this context. And I'm um, sure it explains it later, too. That's how the Bible is. If you don't understand it, it will explain it on, on its own later. You know what I mean? So uh, we will look the word up, so this means somebody who's converted. So woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass the sea and land to make one converter, you know, some, your, your one follower. So in other words, you, you go all over the sea, all over to every land to try to make one follower, right? And when you make him, you make him twofold more of a child of hell than you are. So much as of hypocrites, right? He's telling tell the scribes and Pharisees that. Much as hypocrites you people up. When you convert a person on your views, right? You're making that person you converted twice as more of a hypocrite than you. And twice as more of a child of hell than yourselves. So again, that's the uh, meaning of the word. So this is what we do, guys. This is called comprehensive study because when, if people just read over this, they're not going to understand it in full. I didn't understand this completely until I learned the, the meaning of that word, proselyte, which is somebody that's been converted, plain and simple, to the Judaism faith in this context, yeah. So woe unto you, Again, whoa, this is like, yeah, you better stop what you're doing and listen, okay? Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, whoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. So you swear by the gold of the temple, you're in debt to it. You know what I mean? That's what he's saying. And he goes, ye fools and blind. He's calling the, the again, the Pharisees, the, the top Jewish leaders. Yeah. You're fools and you're blind. For whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold? Which one is greater? Which greater, the gold or the temple that sanctified that gold? You know what I mean? This is what he's asking. Whoever shall swear by the altar is not is nothing. But whoever shall swear by the gift that is upon the altar, he is guilty. And ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift of, or the altar that sanctified the gift? So what's better, he's asking. The gift or the altar that sanctified that gift? And it goes on, trust me, just going to explain it all together. So, whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, swear by it, and by all things thereon. So if you swear by the altar, everything that comes off that, this is what he's saying, right? So if you swear upon, this is what he's saying, if you swear upon the temple, right, you swear upon that gold that came from it. You swear upon that altar, right, everything that come off that, all those gifts that come off, the, you're, you're guilty of swearing upon that as well. And he's asking, what's greater, the gift or the, the altar that sanctified it? And again, he says, whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, right, Swear by it and by all things thereon. So if the, I hope this makes sense here. And if it doesn't, guys, uh, please put it in the comment section, not the, the chat, uh, but the comment section, and I can help you understand it better. But this should be, I mean, the Bible does its own, you know what I mean? It helps you understand that. And then, but there's more. So verse 21, he says, And who also uh, shall swear by the temple, swears by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that swears by heaven sweareth by the throne of God and by the him that sits upon thereon. And we all know uh, what the scripture said, guys. So in Matthew we covered that you know, shall not swear at all. You don't know, swear upon any oaths, not even of heaven. You know, because when people go into court, they swear in the Bible. Or people say, well, did we, uh, if they get into trouble or something, well, I swear to God I didn't do that. You don't do that. And Jesus says, this, yes be yes, you know be no. I think that was Matthew 6, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but it is in the book of Matthew here uh, where Jesus said that. Don't swear upon heaven. Don't swear upon any oaths, okay? Even if it's of heaven, don't do that. Don't swear on God himself. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. When I go into court, 
uh, they put the Bible there and they said, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, but nothing truth, it'll help me God. I think, well, first of all, I don't take sworn oaths because I follow what my Lord and Savior Jesus says. My yes will be yes, and my no will be no, plain and simple. You tell the judge that. They respect that, by the way, too. So um, let that be known. So this, he's making an example here. And he says again, 22, yeah, and he shows swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God and by the him that sits upon thereon. And woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Several times he's already called these guys hypocrites. He's really, really uh, ticked off, you know. For ye pay tithes of mint and an ass in common, and have omitted the weight of matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought to have been done and not leave that undone. So Paul, I hope I didn't butcher that verse here. So, yeah, he's like great screaming at the Pharisees. And, yeah, they call them hypocrites, whatever. But it says, uh, for you pay tithes of mint and uh, anise and cumin, cumin, I'm sorry, it's uh, spices and all that, and have um, omitted the waiter matters of the law. So, because that's what they're doing to him. Yeah, they're trying to go Jesus to purposely define their law. You know what I mean? So, that you say that you're sitting there weighing matters of the law. That's what you're doing. You're judging people, and there's mercy and faith and all that. That you know, they decide if they want to give somebody whatever the case, and you know whatever the case. But anyway, these what ye to have done and not leave uh, the other undone. So they address some things, you know, the you know you know the matters of the law, but they avoid other things too. So there's more in this too, guys. It's like um, and this goes on as we talk about it interprets itself. So he says, ye blind guides. Would strain at gnat and swallow camel. So yeah, gnat, you know how small a gnat is, right? So they strain at gnats, but end up swallowing a camel. So they bite. In other words, we say you bite off more than you can chew. <laughs> but it's simple in a uh, layman's terms. That. And they, what they do is like they take, you know, the Pharisees say, think they're bigger than they actually are. You know, more authority than they actually are. And woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. So this one past one here, guys, if you, um, there's more to this, and it's just not coming to me right now, but if you understand this more, please put it in the comments too, because this is a joint thing, and we all learn as we go along, you know. And um, there's still, in the, even all this, there's still stuff that, you know, later on in you know, in the future, I'm going to end up pulling out that I've never seen before. This is why the scripture must be studied in this context. Because how many verses we got here? We got 39 verses in this chapter, right? How long would it take you to read your 39 verses you just read from 1 to 39, right? Probably a minute or two. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do as we're doing here, comprehensive study. So he's telling you, blind guides that strain out of that, you aim by your swallow camels and bite off more than you can chew, you know what I mean? And woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You may clean the outside of a cup in the platter, but within they are full of extortion. So, in other words, what they're presenting, right, is this beautiful cup and platter and all that stuff, but within it's disgusting. It's all caked up food and nasty, but the outside of the cup looks beautiful. It's all nice and shiny. To appease people, right? And it, this is more, you know, it's not, you know, the actual couple he's talking about the, themselves, who they are. And though blind Pharisee, right, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, then the outside of them so they may be clean also. So here's the thing, too, you know, you got to um, just say, you got some, you know, you got some people over your house, right? What would you rather take? Give them the cups that, you know, look clean on the outside, but you really haven't cleaned good on the inside? Or the cups that might have little uh, blemishes on the outside, but are perfectly clean on the inside? Yeah, you can wipe the blemishes away, whatever the case. But, you know, you give the person the cup that has nothing in it, it's clean, you know what I mean? But in this case, it's talking about them being clean from inside. That's why he's, he's using this layman's term, this uh, parable here, to explain, okay, and he says uh, that you cleanse first, which was within the cup, and so cleanse within yourself, inside yourself first, before you clean the outside up. Then you clean the outside up too. But first you clean the inside. 
You can't have a full clean per, uh, yourself, all right? You can't be clean unless you cleanse the inside first, spiritually speaking. Like when we all came to the cross, what did we do? We asked to be fulfilled with the blood of Jesus Christ, right? To be born again. We changed ourselves from within first, right? We cleaned ourselves from within. Then after you clean yourself from within, you start living a cleanseful life. You know what I mean? You start living a um, life by example of Jesus, right? Because if you walk around, you know, it, here's the thing, right? You got these false prophets out there. And these Pharisees, exactly what he's saying here. Okay, this is coming to me now from the Holy Spirit. I, I believe. <laughs> and uh, so you got these people out here like the Pharisees and the scribes, right? They walk around, as he just said. This interprets itself right here, right? They walk around. They get the best seats. People greet them. They get all the praise and glory, right? Because they look like righteous men and men of God, right? How many false prophets do that today? You get the 700 club clowns, the priests and all the you know the famous religious leaders walk around. They're, they're in uh, VIP jets, VIP sections of airlines if they fly airline or fly in the land jet. Every restaurant they go to, they get top-notch treatment. They sit in the VIP section and all that. This is what he's talking about. And they look so righteous, so clean on the outside. And people fall for them as these uh, holy like people, you know, all the time. If Joel Osteen was right here, we read this to you guys, right? That would have probably a hundred million people watching this right now, because it's Joel Osteen. Because people can't see what's inside him; they see the outside of him. But his cup, just like all these other religious leaders out there, guys, their cup, oh yeah, looks right in the outside. It's all shiny. But on the inside, as Jesus is saying, it's full of extortion and excess. It's ugly inside. It's filthy inside. This is the scribes and Pharisees he's talking about. On the outside, they present to be these great, wonderful leaders, right? On the inside, they're full of dirt. In 27 here, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like unto the whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and uncleanliness. So, yeah, if you go, you go to, a, this is another example, so this is a perfect example right here. You go to a, a graveyard, right? A sepulchre is this beautiful tomb that's built for somebody, right? It's beautiful. Marble. It's got gold trimming sometimes. Uh, just beautiful artwork. Beautiful handiwork into the tomb, right? Especially if it's a very famous person, right? The best glass for the windows. Uh, you know I mean, the coffin itself is like made of gold or whatever. It's all so beautiful, right? But within the, the tomb, within the coffin, it's full of dead man's bone. It's a rotten flesh. See what he's talking about here? This is exactly when I said scripture interprets itself. Because then in the beginning, we, what he was talking, like we couldn't understand really what he was talking about much. But now as you go on, it interprets itself. Because here's the thing, right? If you were to ask um, people on the internet forums or whatever, what's these first four, four verses mean, right? They'll give you tons of different interpretations, right? But you yourself, if you read it, or, you know, do the scriptures, the whole thing in its context here, yeah, now you understand you don't need to go to some uh, pastor or priest or anything like that to get the interpretation thereof. It's there right there, clear as day. You don't need to interpret it. This is why it's very important to read a verse in its context if you don't understand it. Yeah, it's great to give out verses here and there. But if you don't understand that verse in its context, then you're not prepared to answer that. Because the thing is, if you give 10 different people a verse, right? Don't, one verse. You're going to probably have 9 or 10 different interpretations. Just, you know, I'm talking about regular people that don't understand the Bible. You know, those of us know what the verses mean and are interpreted. We understand that. But I'm talking about 10 regular people or people that don't have eyes to see and all that, they're going to have 10 different interpretations. But if you give that verse in its full context, that's either the paragraph or the chapter, there's no room for interpretation. Every, uh, all 10 of those people are going to have the same exact interpretation. Plain and simple. This is why it's important to do a comprehensive study. Take your time and study. So yeah, he's saying again, uh, the scribes of Pharisees, that are like to the whited sculpt septuagint. These beautiful tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outward, right? And they are. The, even the, the caskets like that, right? But within it, full of dead man's bones and uncleanliness. 
rotted skin and flesh and all that? Yeah. You get the point what he's saying now? Even so, also, I will leave here in righteousness unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So he's telling these scribes and Pharisees who are marveled all over the land and looked upon as these great leaders, right? And this goes to a lot of people today too, guys. All those blokes you see on TV, these big mega centers, they have like 10,000 people within the auditorium all you know, screaming, hallelujah! And these, uh, I call them false prophets out there, misleading people. Outwardly, they look like righteous men unto men. But with them, they're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And only those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear can hear and see that. So many people are misled by these people. And, he's, and this is time to talk in this context here. So many people are misled by these Pharisees and scribes. And now with the Pharisees and scribes, they're, really, they're angry, okay? They're jealous. Because Jesus is by the multitudes taking them away from the bondages of religion. Because the thing is, religion's guys forever. And then when the Catholic Church came along in the 300 some ADs, no, Peter or Paul had nothing to do with the Catholic Church. And Peter was not the first pope, it was Constantine. When Rome lost complete control because Christianity dominated the entire region. So they hijacked their version of Christianity to control people. That's what religion does. It controls people. And it takes, um, excuse the language again, a half-assed version of the Bible. They mislead people with it. They take verses out of context just to mislead people. So you follow them thinking they're a religion of Jesus when they're not. No, no, there is no religion of Jesus. The faith of Jesus, you follow, you answer to only Jesus directly. You don't go to no priest or nothing like that. You answer to talk to Jesus directly. Plain and simple. You read his word for yourself. And I can't emphasize that enough. Even people watching here, yeah, I encourage you to read this for yourself as well, as you're doing on the screen already, but please still at least tomorrow, you know? So he's saying that uh, you also outwardly appeared righteous to men, which they do, all right? But within a full of hypocrisy and iniquity. As it was then, it's now today, too, the same thing. So, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of righteousness. And say, if I had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. So, what he's saying here is like, yeah, if you were in those days, well, you know, because. A lot of the prophets say uh, they suffered death for what they did, for the witness of uh, the Father, right? And if they were alive at those times, they would have walked away from that to avoid being killed. Because they're a bunch of hypocrites and cowards. That's what you know what these people are. The so-called religious leaders, right? And this applies today, too. So verse 31, Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, and that ye are children of them which killed the prophets. So again, in the context there, and he say, if I had been in the days of the fathers, talk about the, the Pharisees and hypocrites there, the scribes, I mean, uh, if you were in the days of the fathers, you would have been the partakers of them in the blood of the prophets. In other words, you would have been the ones killing the prophets. And then here, here it is, right? Uh, now we understand this, right? The scribes and Pharisees, right? Here they are. They claim to be in the name of the prophets that came before them, right? The great prophets of God, right? They claim to be of them. They preach of them, right? However, if these describing the Pharisees were in charge back in those days when there was, you know, the prophets walked the earth, they would have been the ones partaking in the blood of the prophets. In other words, because the prophets were killed for what they did. These so-called uh, scribes and Pharisees uh, that claim to be of the prophets in the name of the prophets, right? They would have been the ones killed them. That's what he's saying directly. And wherefore you be witness unto yourselves that you are children of them which killed the prophets. So he's saying, hey, you speak of the prophets, you recite the prophets, right? But you don't do of the prophets. And in fact, you be the ones killing them if they were alive today because that's what they're about to do to me. That's exactly what Jesus is saying right there. And fill up the measure of your fathers. So ye fill up in the then measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? 
So he's really true number no one. So if you think I'm politically incorrect, man, and uh, there's no such, you shouldn't, there's no room in the, in the movement of Jesus for political correctness. You need to be bold and tell people how it is, plain and simple. Certain people, yeah, you know, depend, you know, it is, you, you know, you go upon people gentle. But people who mislead people, you don't go gentle on them. You, who oh, are man, you put them in that place in front of the whole congregation. So if you're going to church right now, guys, or some synagogue or whatever, right, and you know that person is misleading people, you know that, right? You don't bring them aside. I mean, a regular person you do, you try to talk to them with love and all that. But the people who lead it, you don't bring them aside, guys. You stand up in the middle of your congregation. You make an example out of them in front of the people. That's what you do. That's what you do to false prophets. That's what you do to blasphemous people who mislead others. Don't worry about, if you worry about being political correctness, you know what, you, you shouldn't even be following Jesus. I hate to say that. You need to be bold and fearless, okay? If you're in that church and you know damn well, okay, that what that man behind that pulpit is saying wrong, but you're like, oh, I don't want to say nothing because I don't want to lose the fellowship in the church and all that stuff, and I don't want to, you know, make a jackass of myself. You're not going to make a jackass out of yourself. Because, again, all you, the only person you have to worry about impressing is the Heavenly Father. It doesn't matter what the other people in the church believe, think of you. It doesn't matter. Even your family. You put that person in this place in front of the entire congregation. You challenge them, as the Bible says, challenge every spirit. Especially a person who's leading a ministry. You put them in that place in front of that ministry. Then you walk away from the place. You, know, you say your peace and you walk away. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ. And again, this Jesus said, you serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? He's talking to the top Jewish religious leaders right there. The top ones. So if our heavenly, I'm sorry, our Savior, our Messiah is sitting there telling these people off, right? Why are you sitting there letting this blasphemous priest or pastor or reverend in your church say blasphemy before the Lord and lying to people? Number one, you shouldn't even be there. And number two, you should, before you leave, put that person in his place. And people say, well, I'm not Jesus, I'm not the apostles. Well, you know what? That, that's what you're supposed to be. We're supposed to emulate Jesus. He was bold, you want you to be bold too. Plain and simple. 34, he says, Where though, wherefore, behold, I sent unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. And he's talking about the, you know, the prophets and uh, wise men that he sent upon them. And then, yeah, they were killed. Look at uh, uh, John the Baptist, you know what I mean? And look at how you have the disciples. Look at the deaths they suffered. For preaching the word of Jesus Christ. And he's saying, you, you killed them. And you, you got to kill them. You know what I mean? You got to persecute them and scourge them and everything else in your synagogues. And that upon you may come the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto blood of Zacharias, son of Barakas. Uh, now, I'm sorry, guys, I butchered some of these names. Whom he slew between the temple and the altar. And verily I say unto you all these things that shall come upon this generation. And sure enough, right, as we go further in Matthew, you're going to see a lot of the, the, the apostles were killed. The people that Jesus sent, they were killed from these very people. And O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou hast killest the prophets, the strongest them which were sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered my children together as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings? And ye would not. So Jesus said, I have gathered these people under, under my wing. You know what I mean? You have not done that. But you kill them instead. Behold, your house is left unto your desolate. You desolate. So your house is going to be desolate. We know what happens after, you know, shortly after this. The house to talk about, that, that's the way now it's the second temple, right? The uh, so-called house of God at the time, right? The house left unto you will be de uh, you desolate. Basically, the prophesy and destruction of your temple. And he goes on in Matthew 24 to say the same thing. And uh, one of my favorite chapters coming up next. 
So, uh, verse 39, For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Telling the people that. You shall not see me henceforth until you shall say, Bless he that comes in the name of the Lord. So that's after he's crucified, he comes back in the spirit, and everybody witnesses this. Jesus is walking around in the spirit after the crucifixion. And that's when, and only when everybody 100% really believes. Because as people, they have like human nature, you still doubt, right? Plain and simple. You still got doubts in you, it's just the way humans are, you know? So this is just a truly amazing, it really is. And uh, we're going to get to Matthew chapter 24, which is, uh, wow, it's one, that's going to take a while to, to go through that because it's one of the most powerful uh, for prophecy and it debunks the pre-tourism, debunks uh, so many different religions out there. Again, the book of Matthew is a nuclear bomb for this stuff. I love it. Uh, man, I can't wait to get into that. So um, please uh, stand by for the next chapter. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us here. Uh, this is, I think this is an awesome teaching. And I've learned some stuff myself as well. So, um, you guys, if you've got any of those added to it, please um, put it in the comment section. And I tell people all the time, we need to challenge every spirit. And if you think I'm wrong on something, by all means, and I'm not going to get insulted, I, I humble myself, you know. Uh, put it in the comment section, not the chat room, but the comment section, and let me know what's up. And we'll talk about it, all right? And if you prove me wrong with the scriptures, then I'll come back and humbly admit you were right, you know what I mean? There's no room for egos or anything like that in this uh, movement of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. So trust the plan, the only plan, guys. That's the Bible. Don't take anybody else's word for it. Not even mine today. What I just talked about today, do not take my word for it. Read it for yourself. Like today, when we're done, man, go read the uh, book of Matthew chapter 23 for yourselves. Take your time doing it, guys. So this is Dan Bedine for TruthRadioShow.com. And please subscribe to NYSTV.org. Uh, they can take ninety nine a month or something like that. I forgot what it uh, costs, but uh, you get one month free on me with the promo code Dan the Man. So if you go to the website, uh, thousands of videos on demand, awesome, awesome spiritual warfare stuff. Uh, they got their own service because YouTube kept taking their stuff down. So uh, John Pound is there, you know, the, the owner of Nice TV. He had to create his own service, which costs a lot of money to run. Anybody that knows computers knows what I'm talking about. So uh, they create their own service to protect that content. And um, unfortunately, you do have to charge people to keep the service going. You know what I mean? It's very expensive. So if you want to try it out for one month free, you don't even have to enter a credit card. You got nothing to lose, literally. Just go in there, and I guarantee you're going to love it, guys. Uh, low case, one word right there, you see, the promo code, Dan the Man. And also the instructions are in the description of this video as well. So that being said, guys, we love you very much. God bless. Shalom. You are the resistance. And please check us out, truthradioshow.com. And thank you for joining us in this comprehensive study of the book of Matthew, chapter 23. We'll see you on 24. God bless.